Welcome to Friday. Hello, everyone. Richard Carlton. Welcome to FMTrain.tv, where every day, most every day, we're doing great FileMaker training. Today's conversation is about performance, and this is like a fundamental. This is for Jess, and I think Jesse probably knows about this, but I want to kind of go through this in kind of an important sort of way. So here is the deal. Uh, if we do the progression of learning, the progression of learning, and I hear all the noises, so everyone just kind of be cool with the, the noises on Discord. Um the progression of learning is from the beginning level to the intermediate to advanced level. As you progress at the beginning developer level, some of you are like this. You just want it to work and it works at all. Like if you come over here and you have this invoice, this is a big invoice. I'm going to move to that right there. There's Margaret over there, I guess. Um, I guess some of you might see me. Um, if you look at this, the idea is that if you come down to the bottom or you come over here and you get a total then you're really happy that this worked at all, right? If I come back out over here to, let me see, come back out over here, let me see. All right, there's a there's some, there's some invoice there, a little smaller. If you can get these three items to add up correctly, as a beginning developer, you're stoked, okay? At an intermediate developer, you, you assume that you could get it to add up correctly anyway, but then you start to worry about performance. And the issue is, is that if you display a screen of information, the more we, and Hans had covered this uh, about three weeks ago where he actually, he, he did something, but I'm attacking the issue kind of from a different side where you did co uh, conditional formatting on a screen and then it would count the numbers of times it would process the conditional formatting. Um, the fundamental is that if you do one little thing on a screen and you're saying, oh, it's just going to conditionally format or just run this one total once. And, and so you're paying a penny or a nickel for something, right? And you're like, oh, it's only once. But then you have 1.1 million records times that one penny or that five cents. And it has to run through all of those for some reason. That causes a major performance penalty and a slowdown in the system um, because file, you're forcing FileMaker. There's nothing wrong with FileMaker. All this is not a this is like technology in general kind of thing. The issue becomes one where uh, is that it doesn't have to just do it on this invoice. It has to do it on all 1.1 million invoices, right? So if I do a search for, let me just do a search for M on here and see how many records we get. So I'm doing a search for M. 187,000, that's too many. I'm going to do a refind, and I'm going to do ME and see what I get. So I have 32,000 records, okay? That's probably not too horribly bad, ME. Let me, let, me, let me refind again. I'm going to do MET. I'm trying to, there we go, 7,000. So this will be more manageable. So if I go to layout mode over here, I go to layout mode, and uh, I'm going to move, I got zoom over here in the way. I'm going to move that up to the top. And so right over here, we have this idea of the subtotal price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of these items right here. Get rid of them. We don't need to see them on screen. I am not sure what test calc is. I'm going to move it. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. And I have the amount due right here. So here is the rub with these things. Um, the subtotal price is going to be the subtotal calculation of the extended, so it's this extended price plus this one, plus this one, plus this one. That's the basic formula. The trick is, is when does this run? When does this run? When should it run? If you define uh, the normal the normal way of building a FileMaker file, Margaret's actually dealing with this right now with Big Valley with a different area, um, is that if you build this to be a calculation field or a summary field, the data is never saved. It recalculates it on the fly all the time whenever you display that record, need that record. So it forces this calculation. It doesn't save it. Now you're like, well, someone could change it. Then it has to update. Yeah, that's totally correct. In an ideal world, as a more intermediate to advanced developer, you want to limit that calculation to only firing when you make a change to the data if that makes sense. And so I'm going to take a look at subtotal price. We're going to see how it's defined. I'm going to make this a little smaller over on this side. If it'll let me, it won't make it any smaller. I'm, I'm, I'm already restricted in size over here. Can I, let me come over here, this one. Can I grab this, move that over? Can I move that? No, nope, it's not going to let me move it. So um, you can't re-adjust uh, re, uh, the size of this one. This one's already as small as possible. I'm going to go to File, Manage, database, right? Very important. We're going to take a look at subtotal price. We're in invoices. We're going to go to subtotal price, subtotal price, subtotal price. Dun, 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 dun. Where is that at? I don't even see it here. Subtotal price right there. It's a number field. 
And you're like, well, if you if it's a number field, it doesn't calculate. How does it get updated? See, normally what happens is that you uh, you would create a field that would give you the summary. So if I call some total price, I'm going to call this one cached. And for clarity, oop, I can't spell cash correctly. Not cash with S, but cash as in it's kind of saved. I'm going to change the name of that. Then I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to call subtotal price. I would say auto calc. Okay. And I'm going to change the name of that one. And I'm going to change it to be a calculation. This is how you would build it normally as a junior developer, beginner file maker person. And you're going to say, uh, change it to that. I'll say change. I'll say, okay. And what happens is that you end up with a field. This is, and it, and it, back in the old days, this was the calculation. It got changed. So what remember is, hey, back in the old days, you had this calculation in here. So what this is, is the, if you come over here, over here, and you have the sum function. The sum function allows you to total. If I bring up a help desk, a help question on it, it's, it brings up, returns the total of all valid non-blank values. Primarily, it targets related data. Okay, so the summary field is going to show you total of related data. If you're trying to total data in the same table, you use a summary field. This is one of those moments where you're like, and I've had this conversation with some of the live stream people before, and that is that the summary field is going to total up data in the current table. On And so if the data is local to the table you're on, right, you're getting a total the total field is in the same table where there's lots of records. That's a summary field. If you're trying to get a summary of a bunch of data, but it happens to be uh, a cross relationship, use a calculation field that uses the sum function. To me, they should be the same damn thing, right? But uh, it's two types of fields. So one's a summary field. The other one's a calculation field that can be, you know, uh, number, text, whatever, and it's going to get the related data. So understand it's two nearly identical things, but depending upon where the data is coming from that you're totaling, you're going to either use a summary field if it's local in the same table, or if it's across a relationship, you're going to use a sum. Okay, hopefully okay. that answers. So for my particular case with like the time entries, I would put a summary field because it's totaling up all the data inside of that table. You're, 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 you need a total of, like if you're in a list view and you want a total List view, list view, list view, list view. And at the bottom of the list view, you want the total. All those records in the list are local to that layout, right? The summary at the bottom, the footer will be local to that layout. So it's all, so you want a summary field because you're in the same table. So the answer is yes, right? So here's the deal. So the issue cut becomes one where if I build this like this, I'm going to say, oh, cancel. I want to say, okay. Please take the change and save it. Now, other thing to keep in mind is that it has to be unstored because it's based upon related data. If you have a calculation or a value that's based upon related data, it must be unstored because FileMaker won't know when the, like one table generally, as a general rule, is unaware when another table through a relationship has been updated. FileMaker does it has a very elaborate, it's called the uh, dependency tree. There's a great video on that that Margaret could probably find for you. We buried it, the discrepancy tree video. Clarice would probably pull it at some point. It's not on the web anymore, but we kept the copy and we posted it to kind of a, a, a some other location. Margaret, if you want to find that. Um, and so shaking the dependency tree, right? Is that what you're talking about? Shaking the dependency tree. It's a very big one. I made this change, of course, with 1.1 million records, but it shouldn't be processing. Well, I guess it kind of is, right? Is it going to process 1.1 million records? I might have just boogered myself right here. Making the point is that you you what you want to do <laughs> over here is that you you have a, a field that could be cache. When I say cache, it means that it won't set itself. You want to set based upon when someone updates over here. So there's little script triggers, little firework things down here, all the way around down here. And if any of these are modified upon the uh, of the exit of that modification, the commit of the record, these, uh, these there's a script that triggers that will set these then. They're set only when someone makes an edit. Now, here's the rub as a beginning developer or beginning you know pilot, same thing, a basic technique, is that 
Normally, FileMaker handles the calculations for you automatically because it's auto, auto magical is a kind of a phrase that Clarence has used before. It's auto magically smart. It's magically delicious, right? Lucky charms, they're auto magical. They just work. The problem is they work all the time, even when you don't want them to work. And so you end up with 1.1 billion records that are busy spinning that are updating themselves, right? And the rub is, is that uh, that can happen at inopportune time, like right now. And so because the file is on the FileMaker server, right, and not on the client, then if I crash the file right now, it should not damage the database, if that makes any sense, right? So I'm going to probably kill this thing here uh, because it's spinning, and I don't know how long it's going to take, but this is the essential item. So between a, be a beginning developer and advanced developer or intermediate developer, you know that you want this to calculate only when the data changes over here. FileMaker with a sum calculation or a summary field will recalculate it every time you want to display it. It never saves like the old value. So every so so it 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 generates the number, it shows it to you, and then you go somewhere else, come back, jump to a different layout, come back again, and it goes, oh, I have no idea what this number is. Let me recalculate it 100, 1.1 million times. And that's the fu that's the fundamental problem. So what you have to do as a more advanced developer is like, well, I only wanted to up, uh, update this total when something changes over here. And so you're having to do a little bit deeper thinking about when might this need to be refreshed based upon your experience as a FileMaker developer. If you're brand new, you have no idea. No idea. But as a more of a professional developer, you realize that if no one has changed anything on the invoice, the totals probably haven't changed either, right? So we we base that these updates based upon that idea. So what you will see is that you uh, sometimes on a list view specifically, I'm going to go ahead and force quiz this thing. It's lost its mind. Watch me. Shouldn't cause a problem, but watch it cause a problem. So I'm going to reopen FileMaker. I'm going to go to, yeah, it forgot the uh, thing there. I'm going to go to settings. Uh, actually, I'm going to say host, host to DBW 13. It's called the mock data. It's a cop a version of the file. We have the word mock in here. And I open this up and it probably did not save the password knowing my luck. Oh, it did. Good for it. Sometimes if you save the password, but then you crash, you know, it doesn't save it. So now it fires it up. And so I'm not sure what it was updating or not updating. If I go to field definitions, just for interesting, I'm in preferences. Um, once again, you go to the field definitions, the place and starts is where you are at, right? So it drops us into preference uh, to fields. I want to go to invoices, come down here to, it was the summary of the price. And, and so they're both in here. So I'm not sure if I hit okay, maybe the server is still processing something or thinking about it, uh, but that's in here. So if I come over here to invoices, and I'm just going to go to, I'm going to go to like, I want the last invoices. Should have less data on it, hopefully. All right, there you go. Yeah, four items on it. So I have, I'm going to come over here to layout mode. And, oh, yeah, the, the changes I made to layout weren't saved. I'm just going to get rid of this. Delete, 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 delete. I don't even, I don't even really care about the total due and this stuff. What I want to do is this is the cached one here. This is the one that we save. So we're going to call it subtotal cached. And then I'm going to take this one right here, duplicate it. And this is going to be subtotal um, auto calc. So this is the auto one as a beginner you're always going to use, right? So then I come down here, auto calc. I hit browse mode, save the change. And so... So if you look right here, if I come over here and I'm going to say I'm going to change the quantity of this item to three items, okay? When I click out over here or I tab over here, see, it changed there, but a script fired here, right? Oh, right? But if I leave this layout and come back, this will refire and this has been saved. If I go to list view, this becomes really noticeable in list view. So this is why you have to be extraordinarily careful about this. Notice at the bottom... No totals showed up. Why? Because we don't want the totals firing on the bottom unless the user, for some reason, thinks there's a total at the bottom they need to have. Well, I like it to show up automatically. 
Well, then you also like the database to go really slow, right? That's the that's kind of the trade-off you have to do. You have to tell the user, hey, if if it's blank, you want to hit it, hit the update button here. Now, what I'm going to do is before I do that, I'm going to put something uh, a little smaller. So I got 20, 2,130 records, okay? If I tell this to run, it's going to, if I do a script, uh, script debugger, I'm going to pop this up. I'm going to hit this button. It's going to say, run a script called 1131, update the invoice totals. And so... There's some commented code. It frees the window. It's gonna uh, it's gonna log the uh, log to the log that we are doing this, and then change the status area. Then it comes down here. Oh, there there's the log. More logging action going on. Right. It does it pretty fast. Come down farther. Come down farther. Come down farther. Skip. 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 Continue session. We're still in the log. Need to get out of the log. Now we're back. Now it sets this, these, that's a global field, G underscore. Those are globals down at the bottom. Globals down at the bottom. So it's going to set these. Set, 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 right? And so without me looking at it anymore down here, now you have totals. You're like, ah. And so the rub is, though, if someone says, well, I need to see how many invoices that Sherlock or this Panair guy person, uh, how many invoices he has. So copy, find, how many are in here, okay? And I say, I've got 1,100 invoices. I may not want to see the total down here, right? Um, and, and if I, and if I, but if I press the button, um, there's a slight delay and it gives us see that little flash, slight delay and it updates the numbers, 14 million. Now, if you had these set as automatic as summary fields, every time you hit the screen, every time you did anything, even if you hit show all records right here, you say, I'm going to find all records, show all records. Then it's going to do it all for everyone. It's going to sit there and grind and grind and grind. Even though we didn't give a what the total was because maybe this is 10 years. Who cares what we sold over 10 years? We only care what we sold last month or the last year, if that makes any sense. So let's do a, a let's, let's try the calculation here with a bigger found set. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to do a found for M on the first name. 100,000 records. How about MH? There was a Hawks over here. How many do we have there? 3,000. Yeah, let's do refine. Let me do uh, K through M. Hey, how about that? A range here with the H on the back. That'll give me a bigger number. 3,000. Yeah, still not that good. What refine. What? What, what what number are you looking for roughly? Well, like twenty or thirty thousand. Got it. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Forty three thousand. Okay. How long will it take to run this update? Now, how long it takes our script is very similar to how long it would take Claris's and their summary to run too. So if you just said you just did a search for this and you had the automatic calculations on the bottom, you get this progress bar. I clicked it. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my God. Four thirty eight thousand. Ah, oh, it's horrible. So you don't want this to be what people think of you behind your back. Well, Hot Air Balloon Kid made us a solution. It's really great. But every time we go to this list view, we get this progress bar and we have to get go to a bathroom and get coffee at Starbucks in line because that's how much time we have, right? You get, get in line at Starbucks sometimes. See how that goes. It's like Chick-fil-A, right? They have double lanes, and it's out in the street causing crashes on the freeway because people are trying to get off the off-ramp to go to Chick-fil-A at the first exit. So, yeah, this is the Chick-fil-A uh, high uh, traffic area progress. So you don't want this to be automatic. You only want it to run when you want to. Now, if you have 48,000 records, say, for the last year, and you're a vice president of sales, you're like, I need to know how many we did, 48,000. You press the button, he's like, yeah, we sold a bunch. But he, he or she ask for the data so they understand that it's coming up because if you ask for it, you're going to get it. And they understand that it might take a little bit of time. Now it's done. And you have uh, $592 million. That's a big chunk of change. So, but you, you have asked for it. So if you ask for something and it goes slow, then that informs your decision-making, right? Maybe you only want to do it when it's important. But it was important. So then you're willing to go get a coffee. But if Sally and, and Fred and Juan and all the, the uh, 
as executive assistants are just doing and running around and doing fines and stuff. They don't need to be tripping this all the time. Well, it's a dialogue. It's a dialogue. Right? So get the idea. So questions about this. It's very, very important. This is this is such a huge I, I, uh, idea. So these though, so this down here, Margaret, would have been a summary field at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a global field. Would be a summary on the actual invoice. So remember, this is in the in the uh, this is the invoice total, and this is the summary of the total. However, on the actual invoice date entry screen, we're still on the invoice, but this data is line items, so it's related data. So we're totaling related data. So here we would use the some function, right? Okay. Some function. So and on the the list function. Piece, or the yes, if you're getting the total of related data. Okay. So what information is showing up in the list view? Is the, is the result of the sum function showing up in the list view? So so this is an invoice, and these totals are right here. And if I go to the list view, now we're seeing all the invoices, and I was on this one up here. So I was seeing, now we're on a list view of all the invoices. Okay. So all these so, numbers are driven by line items. Every it. last one. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So this is the result from the sum function because it was related data. But here you can actually use a summary field because all technically from the same table. Theoretically, okay, theoretically, these should all be some are all cached um cached cache tech number fields. They probably are. They're probably all not in fact that first one right here, right here, if I go to layout mode, it'll probably be the one that says underscore cached. There it is. Now if I do auto calc it'll run every time you mess with it, right? All right, here we go. I'm gonna hit browse one, two, three. Browse. Are you really? We're gonna you're gonna crash the database. Well, okay, it's four. It hasn't now, retotaled. Now, uh, okay, but back up. If I, it's normally I can scroll pretty fast. It's kind of chunky because it's trying yeah. to do the total. So if I just grab this and I go, Woo, see, I'm dragging it down. You see my mouse moving down? <laughs> it's struggling because it's doing them in real time. Okay. See what I'm saying? And yeah. then. And and but see, it's not doing everyone every time because it doesn't. It only needs it right here. But if these because these are global fields. But if you put the actual summary field on here, layout mode. Let me go back to layout mode. And it went wherever it went. That's a bug. So we come down here to the total price. So that's the global one. Mm -hmm. boop, 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 boop. And then that was going to be the global price, which is fine. This one right here, uh, this will be the uh, cached global. Once again, cash is global. Cash with a D. Yes? D yeah. Global. This one right here is going to be the uh, summary. Summary field auto calc. So auto being that it's going to do it when it wants to and not when you want it to. That makes sense, everyone. Okay, auto. Okay, I'm gonna double click this one. I'm looking for a. It's probably called a summary field down here. Summary, order, paid, or summary, sum by pay. Let me let me hit cancel here real quick. Let me go to field definitions and try to find it. So I'm looking for. Uh, I'm gonna go by type by type right here. So all the summaries together. So we're looking for something that says summary of price uh okay. subtotal isn't oh summary no you want summary um I no think. no so, okay this is the field name these are all summary fields yes i just don't want to write summary out because it takes a lot of space and you know, it's hard to read this so i'm looking at one that says of uh, total price oh these are uh when sorted by some total of found set of invoices summary field right there it's not a global go back go down yeah, we could do this one. It doesn't matter. Sum total of invoice grand total. So sum total of found set of That's invoice. the same name as the global one is just not global. Yeah, this is summary of all invoices. This is different names. So I'll just get summary of all invoices. Because what this will do, actually, let me go into field definitions. Summary, let's go back to that one again. Summary of all invoice. Summary of grand total. I'm going to have it get the summary of the... Where's the one? Is this still in the, yeah, this is the field definition order. I need the price 
uh, the uh, the price, uh, which is auto calc. So I'm looking for the price, auto calc, calc. Uh, where did that subtotal price auto calc? There it is. That's the one I want. So now you have two of these things that are automatically nasty, auto nasty. And watch me hit OK, and now it's gonna think about this. Is figure checking stuff out, doing stuff. This will take hopefully too long. Because it won't remember, it's not going to calculate here because it only calculates when it needs it. And I'm in I'm in layout mode over there, so hopefully it doesn't freak too badly. Now, once again, I'm on a wireless network in Stockton, California. This FileMaker file is on 13, is wherever it's at. So I'm going to change this one right here to that uh, the very bottom one, this one here. So here's the deal: if I go browse mode, it's probably it's going to go. Hey, I've got to display this. That's dependent upon this one up here. So it's going to go and then it'll go and then it'll go ding your toast pops out of the toaster one two three browse and so you're like see what it's done it's already a little little binky thing it's already calculating it's already it's already busy so before it drew anything it already started doing totals and went oh so now it's busy talking to the server, downloading those 50,000 records. And it's 50,000 invoices, but they might have 10 line items on each one or something. So it's 50 times 10, 500,000 records total in here. Uh -oh. So this is why we cache the data and we only tell scripts to run it when we want to because this is how you are not a valuable to the FileMaker person. We want every one of you to have a successful solution. Everyone looks at you and says, Jesse, the most awesome FileMaker person on the planet. Art, Major League Baseball's gift to FileMaker. We want them to say things with reverence like that. Not, oh my God, it's so slow, Margaret. This is heavy, right? <laughs> uh, I have questions. Go. Or rather, people have questions. Okay, go uh, we're going to do David's first. Brandon, I see your question. I'll go to it shortly. Uh, David A., the cache field is a store calculation field? Question mark. No, I no. Auto The auto calc ones you want to stay far away from are, are unstored calculation fields. If at all possible, don't use... Okay, it, let me just say this real quick. As a professional developer, if at all possible, don't use stored any sort of calculation fields at all. But definitely unstored are the kiss of death. Stored are better because they won't necessarily recalculate, but they, but a stored calculation can't get related data. Does that make sense? So, yes. So, so but a calculation, if it's looking through at related data for any reason, looking at, at related data, it has to be unstored, which means every time you need it, it's gonna it's it'll process it and then immediately forget it. It's from sentence to sentence, the data is dumped. So quick question about the cache. Field. Did we answer? Did we answer David's question? I don't think we did. I think he's asking, okay. "What is the cash field? Like, is it a the calculation? Is this a tech? No, it's a text field or a number field, and we set it with the script. We control the script. Down at the bottom, there's a button here that runs the script that that updates these. And on the invoice, we could do it that way, but we decided to put a trigger on each of the things on the line item, so it never updates the totals on the invoice unless you touch something in the line item, and then it redoes the totals for the invoice. So if you if you type in something in line item one and you go to the next line, it's going to run all the calcs. You do it again, it's going to run all the calcs. Ideally, it would only do it after you're done, but we have no way of knowing when you're really done. But the penalty isn't too bad just on the one invoice, right? So the cached values, cash and, and performance and caching, cached is just a text or number field or a date or time field, whatever, that doesn't have an automatically firing calculation that somehow drives it. A summary field is basically an auto firing calculation. A calculation field, <laughs> by definition, is an auto firing calculation field. The only question is whether it's stored or unstored. Summary fields, a summary field is, is essentially an unstored auto firing calculation, an unstored calculation. That's what summary fields are. And under the hood, they're handled differently. They're pretty high performance. They're faster than a calc field. Not to worry about that, but they are different, but from the standpoint, you could describe a summary field as being a calc field, a, a, a calculate an unstored calculation field. Yeah, very. I, I think you could. Yeah, I think you could actually take all the summary fields in existence. If it was, I'm sure there's an underlying 
things under the hood that make this not possible. But if you want to simplify the platform, you could take all the summary fields and and remove them and then move all that capability. Some of it's already there. Move it into the calculations. So you wouldn't have to worry about summaries because a, a, a calculation at the bottom, a calculation can be a summary, right? It's just the thing is, where is it at? If the calculation's up here, it's on the body. If you have a calculation down here in a, in a footer or a trailing summary, then it's going to act across the entire found set of records. That should answer David's question. I hope. We lost uh, No, I David's typing. Um, best is a field with a button to trigger the calculation. I like a button because then you train the users to like, hey, if you want to see this updated, just hit the update button. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a little blue button here, right? On the invoice, we made it automatic because see here, if you hit update, there might be a, pen a measurable penalty like you saw the progress bar earlier, right? On an invoice, there really is not much penalty to having it being automatic. But, but by it being automatic, see, it's really not so much about saving performance when you're looking at an individual invoice. It's about getting all the data cached. So when you get to this screen, the total's already cached here. And you're just going to add these up on demand and total them in the bottom. The problem is, like we just did, is that we turned caching off up here and caching off on this. And this said, oh, I need a total. And this one said, you want a total of me? And I have no idea. How do I do it? Oh, I have to go find all the records in the system and go to all the, this is an invoice, find all the related line items, right? Parent, child, total up all those for each invoice, stick it in here, then do the next one. Oh, all the related line items. Oh, got it. Next one. That's third. All the related items. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. At 1.1 million times. At computer speed, but once again, 1.1 or one whatever a million records or 100,000 records. You're going to have the same kind of performance burps that'll be noticeable. When you get above 50,000 records, you're going to start. And if you miss, if you write stuff sloppily, like a, as a beginning developer, which is fine as a beginner, this is all the stuff that as a beginner, you don't have to worry, you don't worry about because this works. But then you have a database at 5,000 records and 10,000 records and 50,000 records. And suddenly some boss somewhere, maybe not even in your department goes, man, that's slow shit. And and that's where you have to go back and kind of re-engineer it a little bit, re-architect it. That's the progression of this. You learn it, you're successful, then they give you more. Whatever, whatever, what happens when you're successful in life? We'll give you more. That, that's that line. If you want something done in a company, go find a busy person who's already got too much to do. That's how it gets done. Uh, I have another question, which I'm going to grab. Uh, okay. Are you going to learn the script used to save and the script used to trigger new saved data from Brandon Newton? Uh, well, I'm going to have to force quit this because obviously it's sufficiently aggravated that I needed to like un unwind itself and I'm not going to do it on live TV for whatever reason. Uh, so what does Brandon want to see specifically? The, the script is, well, go to the invoice and look at the script. Um, let me do that real quick. I'm not quite sure what you mean by saving, Brandon, because the exact question is, are we going to learn the script used to save and the script used to trigger new saved data? I I, I don't know if he wrote it awkward or well, well yeah, the answer is yes. Let's let's go do that. How about we just answer it? Yes. yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to host. I'm going to go to DBW 13. I'm going to find the file called mock data generator. And once again, I'm on kind of a wire, a uh, funny, I, uh, that was an interesting bug. I put it in there and it didn't. There it goes. Ha. <laughs> interesting. So I open this up. So, because saving data, all you have to do is set it. And there's so there's really, so Brandon's a kind of an important idea is that if you're on the invoice, okay, once again, I'm just going to go to the invoice. I'm going to go to one that's kind of towards the end over here is probably a little simple simpler hopefully yeah there's three perfect okay so most of you when you first build an invoice you're going to build these will be you know um unstored calculation which is fine and then these will be uh once again uh these, these will be uh unstored calcs as well so a calculation with a sum function that's what this one is this one is the one that's cached okay so how do we how do we brandon said well we're going to learn the script that's going to save data here save it there Okay. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go to layout mode. I'm gonna look at the scripts here that that all these all these little stars are script triggers. You click on that field, 
You right click, you say script trigger, and it's going to fire up 1154. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 1154 real quick in scripts. Uh, damn it. Zoom keeps popping up. Script workspace. I'm going to go to 1154. And this is from FM starting point, right? So, um, oh, okay. So it's pretty, oh, here it is, pretty basic. So this is 1154. So it's doing a bunch of different. So all the calcs down here, um, let me go back over here. There's a bunch of calcs over here, the the total of this invoice or whatever, if I come over here. So uh, let's just jump around, it's really slow. Here we go. There's a bunch of them in here. I got rid of some of them. Each one of these is a set field command to set it. So I have a script that goes set, 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 set. Literally, that's the script. So I go back to scripts. I go back over here. This is that script. It's 1154. We call it. The trigger, what was the trigger over here? We said right click. We said script triggers. It's on object save. Yeah, don't worry about that one up there. That has to do with uh, lock in an invoice so it can't be changed later. This one right here is update cache totals. So Brandon, this would say save cache totals for individual invoice financial counts. Okay. And so it's going to, within the script, which is down here, so if you make a change and save anywhere over here on the line items, it fires this script. This script's going to go to this is a number field. This is a number field. Okay. All these are number fields. And then we set them to the calculation and it does them on one pass. It doesn't, it does it when we tell it to, we told it because the script trigger told it, or we could, we could have removed the script triggers and put a button there. It's what we did on the list view. There's a button that does that same thing on that one. I think it did a little bit of an audit trail on it to tell us what we're doing, but there's no audit. This is very basic right here. So you set, 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 set and commit finishes it, saves it off to the FileMaker server just to force it to do that. That's it. So that is setting the data, triggering it, setting it, and then you're done. And then the screen will refresh because your script is ended, right? And this, these, all these numbers will refresh, right? So if I go back to, uh, I go to browse mode right here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to buy one of these, okay? I haven't, when I click out, it's going to save it. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click onto this one, two, three, click and see it refreshed. Okay. Actually the auto, this one auto refreshed here, the auto calc, but it hasn't saved yet because I'm going from field to field. I haven't executed the save yet. If I click out over here or I jump a record, I'm going to click here and watch that number right there. One, two, three, click. And did my, did my script not run? Let's check the script. Let's make sure it's working correctly. It was working here. So this one is the cached, okay? And that's the total. Oh, I we have to add that to the script. Okay. Ha. Huh. Okay. Because of my demo, I broke the demo. Here, let me go to script. Uh, let me go to script workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 1154, and I'm going to say subtotal cost, da, 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 subtotal price cached. Um, is that that one there? Subtotal priced cached line item right there. So it should it should run right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show custom dialog. I'm going to like uh, trigger fired. Okay. Save close close browse. Okay. So. If we're here and I change that to a two, ah, uh, trigger fired. There it goes, and it updated, okay? So if I, I do a five and I click out, trigger fired, there it goes, okay? And the number, and that one, that one's running automatically, but the script is setting this one, okay? If I go one and I tab out, see so it trigger fired, so. So in this case, I don't know what we did before. Something wasn't quite right, but you see it's firing. This trick, the script fires, it saves it here. It's actually very reliable. Very reliable. So and that's how you you have it only update this. So because here's the thing, Brandon, it's very important to understand. If I go to this invoice, if I just jump, I'm just gonna jump to an invoice. I don't want it to process all these calcs just because I landed on it. So if I go over here, one, two, three, drop. These were already calculated. 
these were already saved and calculated. It had to do that one right there real quick. So you could say, well, I didn't really notice the speed performance, but if I put a bunch of auto calculations in here, you'd start to slow down. If I come over here and I remove this off the layout, browse mode, and then I jump, one, two, three, jump, you'll notice that you could time it, it's faster. And it's not just that you do it once, but it's when you do it a whole bunch of times. It wasn't so much that it was a problem in here. The issue becomes one where it's a problem on the list view. And this is where you get to the list view. And it's like, oh, my God. And you're, you're starting spinning. And there it goes. Now it's, oh, we just went to list view. We didn't want to see the total. Now we have to wait 1.19 million times. It's going to count. This will never finish this century. And before I got in here and changed it, it would it would it was fast and it only updated when we press the update button at the bottom makes sense so that update button is the same kind of script the 1154 script all it's doing is a set field and the total the total is a sum is a sum calculation so if you want to see i can tell it to stop so now down at the bottom it's there's a question mark because it couldn't do the calc it was trying to do that calculation that summary field couldn't do it quite a question mark doesn't know what to do. It actually it actually took the stop. That was kind of great. Now, if I press the update here, it's going to run really slow on our script. But then I have I have deliberately <laughs> deliberately fired it at 1.1 million records. So you you're like, okay, well that's I deliberately told it to total a million records. That's my fault. As opposed to I just flipped here by accident and it went wild. Right? It's just doing it. I didn't need a total. You want it to be fast until you do something that, that, that the user understands they've done something. You can even put a note button on update total. This might be slow in, in parentheses underneath it. So this is how starting point standard and enhanced are built. Starting point enhanced and standard. Starting point light, we don't build it this way because for beginners, we want to use those sum functions. Make sense? So the light version doesn't have these performance upgrades. It's a basic training tool. We could retrofit it. Easy as enough. You could totally retrofit it. It's not very hard. But in starting point standard enhanced, we want those CRMs to be fast. He, The person said, was, sorry, it's a bad question because I'm trying to listen and type, but I wanted to know the scripts used to cache summaries instead of auto-calculate all of the time. I thought the that cache, was one you oh, showed. the cache summaries. That's uh, It's this one down here. So what we have to do is uh, it's got some audit stuff on not audit, but just logging on it. So I'm going to double click it. We're going to go look at the script directly so we can see the important parts. I mean, I, I run a, a lot of times if users try to do stuff, I write an entry in the, in the audit, not so much an audit show, but the log that user did this, like these guys over here, okay? So in there, see the guy in there? Can you see that, the window in there, way in there in the window in there? In that little window in there? They're in there using FileMaker right now. And so if I'm interested, sometimes I'll write a lot of log entry that they did something just so I know what the hell they're doing. So it's 11, uh, 1131. So we're going to take a look at script at 1131. I'm going to go script. Uh, so hopefully this is valuable for people. This is such a fundamental. This Listen, everyone gets excited about Nick, and we are actively working foot Nick on the schedule. But if you don't understand what I'm saying here, don't even bother talking to Nick because Nick is like, Phew. We're flying along at about 100 miles an hour here. Nick goes by at about 900 knots. He's smoking. And like, it's amazing. But then no one could really follow him because they it was amazing. It feels amazing, but I have no idea what he said, right? So learn this first. So we're going to go to script 1131. Here it is. So this is the old version of script. Then it's going to perform another subscript, which is an entry making a note. We'll get rid of that. This frees the window so it doesn't do any flashy thingy stuff. So here it is right here. So we're going to set a global field, and we're using a function. That's a good question. Uh, who asked the question, Bruce? Brandon. Okay, I'm going to say calculated result. Here is the, it's called get summary. So get summary, if I type get summary, there it is right here. So this, so the two calcs, the two calculations or functions you have to know is sum which sums the related data. And this one, which, which pretends like it's a summary field in the local table. It's a calc. Remember I said you could get rid of all the summary fields basically at the end of the day and put them in the calcs. Claris doesn't want to do that, but 
if you're building the platform from scratch, you might want to do that because they're kind of redundant to a degree, right? And so this is the calc right here. So let's just go to info on it. Once again, you bring it up, get the info. It'll tell you all about it. Get summary returns the value of summary of the summary field for the current range of records when the file is sorted by the break field. This always hurts my head, um, but that's what you want to do. And you could use my, if you go to starting point, standard or enhanced, any of those ones, not the light one, because once again, I try to remove this from the light because this is a little bit more, this whole conversation is not a beginner conversation. If you're brand new to FileMaker, I need to apologize for dragging you through the mud today. We need to talk about more basic stuff. Okay, And if you're that person, please understand that there are a bunch of beginners out here right now. I've totally confused and i am sorry i'm truly sorry for that the conversation today is about more of about an intermediate kind of thing this is the function right here so sum is the one i'm going to put this one aside and then if i go over here to sum and i hit that once again you, you selected a function over here then you hit the little question this gives you the yeah that doesn't give you too much get the question mark right here uh so you got the sum and then you have i was trying to show oh is it this one and then this one there we go no nope, format sum. No get summary right here. Great, and this is sum. There we go. Now they look the same. So these are the two, right? This formula here. You don't have to remember all the weeds. Just remember that this is the one that you use to cache a summary field, and the other one is the one you want to cache for uh, related get a summary of related data. They both have the word summary in them. Sum of local data of a summary field. Sum of related data. Got it. Okay, cool. Thank you. I think we're good. I don't see any of your questions. I assume people are good. So it is Friday, but I'm trying to deliver. We're I mean, to deliver we've had a long conversation. Product. It's like 207, so we're good. Yeah, I know. All right, everyone, yeah. have a good Friday. Get some adult beverages. Have a good yep. one.